If you would like to see a messy ball of hair change to a cute Scottish Terrier puppy, keep on watching. This is your video. Hello and welcome back to Kitty Talks Dogs. I'm Kitty, I have been grooming since 1979. I have a lot of passion about dogs and grooming dogs and I gathered information all over the world at dog shows, at grooming competition and I just love grooming very much. I hope my video will help you to groom the Scottish Terrier. Today we have with us Sully. She's born in 2021, January, so she's now eight months old and she has a fantastic temperament. You heard me say Sully is eight months old. I would not recommend the first grooming at eight months old. If you ever visited a dog show, you probably seen all dogs there are standing still at the table and they are letting everything happen. This is with reasons because these dogs are used to being groomed from, from puppy up. From four months old the breeders are using clippers and as you can hear the clippers have like vibration and they're also noisy and these dogs gradually they get used to everything. As they are used to getting everything, it's normal. So they grow up with using the clippers and the dryers and the strippers and they think it's normal. In Sully's case, Sully is now eight months old and Sully has to have today one of the first groomings. It will be very hard for Sully using the clippers and using the nail grinders and so we will see what happens but Sully will have a very hard time and it's going to be stressy for Sully because all this is going to be new. So we're going to try to make it as easy as possible for Sully. I would really not recommend waiting until a dog is eight months old for the first grooming. I would recommend the dog go in at five months, at six and a half months, at seven and a half or eight months old. This way the puppy gets used to the tables and this is not only about the Scottish Terrier, this is for all Terriers. Um, it's necessary to get used to all the material, all the noises, the environment, the table and this way you will have a puppy which is very used to everything and will grow up thinking grooming is normal. The Scottish Terrier is a low-legged terrier. We have two kinds of terriers, the high-legged like the Fox Terrier, the Airedale Terrier, Irish Terrier and then we have the low leg, like the Jack Russell Terrier and the Scottish Terrier. The Scottish Terrier is a hunting dog and it was bred originally in Scotland and it used to hunt for badgers. It used to go into the holes and the owners or the people that were hunting with the dogs used to get it out of the holes with the tail. The Scottish Terrier has a double coat with a very wiry up top coat and the undercoat was a very dense closed, closed coat to protect it from the weathers in Scotland. Actually there's only one correct way to strip a Scottish Terrier and it's stripping by taking out the coat the new wiry rough coat will grow back. Actually the coat keeps on growing even the top coat and the undercoat and the follicle can get overcrowded. If that happens it will be not nice, the hair will get too dull and too soft. This is one of the reasons that we need to strip the Scottish Terrier and also uh, the undercoat take it out to make place for the new hairs to appear and to keep the dog very wiry. I say this but also uh, it's important important to take the undercoat from the furnishings, from the, uh, from the legs and many people think the Scottish Terrier is only stripped at the back and has two lines. This is absolutely not how the Scottish Terrier should look like. You should maybe think about a line in your head but the visible lines are not really the right way for me 
to groom Scottish Terriers. This is why today in this video I will show you how to strip the Scottish Terrier and maybe in my head I will see the lines but I'm going to go all the way. Uh, also the furnishings and uh, the tummy and you will see no straight lines in the dog's back. If you don't strip a terrier, the hair will change to very uh, not shiny, it will be dull, it will change the structure, it will get softer and in many cases the hair will start curling, the color will go more dull and grayish instead of nicely black. If you would like to have a Scottish Terrier which looks like a Scottish Terrier in the books, it's very necessary to hand strip the Scottish Terrier. The Scottish Terrier exists in three colors. First of all, today we have black, then we have the Wheaton color and then we have the Brindle color. The more often you strip a Scottish Terrier, the better. The more often you strip the Scottish Terrier, the more natural. It means if you strip a Scottish Terrier every six weeks or every four weeks, you will have a very natural looking dog. If you strip every six months, you will have a very long top line and you won't have anything underneath which is longer than the undercoat. And in this case, it's quite normal. You see a kind of a line in the middle of the dog's back body and where the furnishing starts. We try to avoid this by having a more regular stripping and if you have a more regular stripping this is called the rolling coat. This is the best way because if you have a rolling coat you always have uh, the, the long coat, the wiry coat which is like growing back and you have the longer ones and in this case we take out the top layer and there's always a layer under there. Today because the puppy is eight months and it hasn't been really stripped very much um, actually the result will be quite short because I have no other layers underneath there but I have set like an example to go the next grooming like six weeks from here and in six weeks from here we will just try to pull out the top layer. The advantage of having multiple layers is you can like style and model the dog as you like and you can like hide imperfections like if he has a dip in the back you can just simply where the dip is make it a little longer and then behind the dip make, make it shorter and that way you start like perfecting the dog and making the dog look better. To make it more easy for Sully, because now she's nearly eight months, we will do no washing today, but we will make a part two and do the finishing and the washing in two weeks. If you see any grooming equipment I'm using and you would like to have more information about the equipment, there's a link down below and you can just click on the link and it will take you to a page with more information about the equipment I'm using. Let me introduce to you Sully. Sully is a very lovable, very curious, very nice puppy with a very nice temperament. As you can see, she's very hairy and she has hair everywhere, just, just as long. And she really needs to be groomed as soon as possible. Without any further delay, let's start grooming Sully. I'm happy to start with all the work that needs doing before the grooming, so I really like to tidy up everything and make everything nice and clean before I start, including the ears and the nails and the clipper work, and so then afterwards I can just concentrate on styling. Here you see me using the ear powder, and I really like the ear powder because it gives me much grip on the coat, and I also am wearing the finger condoms because I personally like pulling out the hair with my fingers and if necessary then I will use tweezers but in many cases I don't need the tweezers because in this case it hasn't been done very much and the hair is very long and I can just pull it out without any problems. After the ear powder I like to use the ear care to dissolve all the wax and all the dirt and the big q-tips. I just dribble in the ear care as much as possible. I usually wait 30 seconds and I give the dog a little massage. In this 30 seconds all the wax will dissolve and it's going to be very easy to get all the dirt out with the big q-tips. 
then I like to finish everything up with the ear wipes because the ear wipes are very good for like the outside of the ears and there I get most of the dirt and the grease out and I can also put the ear wipes around my finger and just go on a little inside with my fingers and take out all the necessary dirt there. After you take all the dirt away, also I can tell you the ears smell squeaky clean. I can see that Sully goes walking quite a bit because the nails are really not very long. So I'm using the Comfort nail uh, clipper, the medium size, and I'm just taking away the tips because I like the nails to be rounded off so when they are sitting on our lap or jumping on top of us it's not sharp or it has no sharp edges. I really really like the grinder very much as you can see in this video and in all my other videos I really like to grind off the nails until they are nicely round and they have no rough edges. If the nails are really not very long, I don't even use a nail cutter. I just grind until the nails are nice, rounded and very short. I like to do all the clipper work in advance because for me, I don't go too far with my clipper work. For example, here in the neck and here at the bottom. And then afterwards I can blend in easily with the stripping knife. I like the Showtex Tarlet because it's very light. It's very easy to hold in the tip of your fingers and to still feel what you're doing. For like small jobs which are very sensitive areas like faces and ears, you can put the RPM right down which even makes less vibration and less noise. This makes the dog more comfortable and makes also it easier for the dogs to let you do the clipping work. I'm going to use the Heinegger for the more heavier work because there the coat is much longer and thicker and it also the finishing needs to be longer. I'm using the 10 blade for the bum because the 10 blade is not too short, it's not too long and it will give me a nice finish around the anus. And I'm using the 5 blade against direction to do the chest. In many cases like when the dog is, has to go to a dog show, we will go much shorter than this, but I prefer to show you the five because here I can go against direction and the coat is not too short and you don't see the skin in between and you still have a nice finish. As you know, Sully is a puppy. She's now nearly eight months old and she hasn't been clipped in her face or on the ear. So here I am steadily working with the clipper, not really clipping, but making her get used to the noise and the vibration. And then slowly I will start using the actual clipper. She's a bit afraid, she's a little panicking. So I'm taking my time doing little pieces at the time. For safely clipping the ears I always advise you to hold your finger at the back to then hold the ear in between the clipper and your finger and to just slightly go over the ear in the direction of the coat growth and holding the clipper quite flat, not like this, just quite flat and just keep on going with the direction of the coat growth. As you can see here, each time I'm like holding my finger on the back of the ear and then we are like doing bits at the time very slowly. Here you see me doing this. I just want to say always shave towards the outside of the ear and never along with because you can catch the ear and we don't want this to happen. We just have to make sure that all the little hairs are very nicely finished. If we hold the ear straight, we have to like see the whole ear. If you hold the dogs at the bottom here, they will like straighten their ears and you will nicely see what you are doing, what you've done. And it's advisable you do this once often a few times. So you see how nice you are shaving or clipping the ears. Here you see me scissoring the edges. The only thing I can say is use a scissor which is sharp. So 
you don't have to push your scissor and hold the scissor as light as possible. You will only cut the edges and if you go too far and you push, as you can see here on my fingers, if I catch my fingers and you don't push, you won't hurt the dog. You will only uh, catch the skin without cutting in the skin. And here you see me using the white blade. I like to use the white blade because I like tilt it to one side and shave it tilted. And that means afterwards I don't have to have a, a real line. I already have some blending going on there. And then I don't have a lot of work to make the blending between the stripping and the clipping. You don't see it very much, but I'm just starting at the chest bone and then going down towards the shoulder. So it's like a V I'm making on one side. And if you see the two sides next to each other, it's like two V's. So it's actually like a W. And here again, you see clearly the W. And then from there, I'm going straight up and I don't know if you've seen it, but I was also tilting my blade. One side was touching and the other side was not. And that means that then I'll be easier to be blending. Here you see it again. How am I tilting my clipper blade? And here you can see the natural finish I have by doing that. And now I'm going to go find the direction of the coat growth and also like following the natural because here it's like turning and if you are looking very well you need to because if you just go over it with your blade it will be longer you have to find the direction and the coat and go against the coat direction to have a good finish we have to be careful not to shave too far. It's from the ear to the eye corner. And then you will, at the side, you will have a mole here. You cannot pass the mole. You have to shave just to there. And underneath, you have to shave to the corner of the lip. As you can see, if you take your time, uh, Sully is just letting us shave her head. And now I'm even shaving very close to her eyes. And as you can see, Sully has confidence now and we can just go ahead because Sully knows we are not there to hurt her and it's all going to be fine. Here I'm showing you with my finger the corner of the eye until the mole and I'm say shaving just towards the nose but I'm stopping at the mole with a nice line and then underneath it's even going shorter to the corner of the lip. Here you see me going just slightly a little further so to make the line very correct. Here again on the other side the same thing. Just take your time and just brush and comb and do a little bit at the time and make sure the lines are very neat. Here you also see me clipping the back of the tail. We clip the back of the tail because we want to make it as comfortable as possible for the dog and we don't really want to strip those sensitive areas. Also around the vagina and around the anus we clip with the 10 blade. The 10 blade is uh, not too short, not too long. You can make a very nice finish around these areas with the 10 blade. Don't forget in between two groomings to use a brush to brush out all the hairs from your blades and use the clipper blade guard to lubricate and make sure your blades go longer and they are neat and they are always very sharp. At last we are ready to make it fun. Let's do some stripping. I am going to use the shed stopper for making all the wool go away. I like to use the shed stopper very much because the angle of the blade is already so. You don't really have to lift up your elbow. You can just hold it like this and just comb through and all the wool and all the undercoat which is loose will come out and this way you can do this before you start so when you start you just have to worry about the top coat. 
Today I'm going to use the Sentinel. I'm using the Sentinel because I'm really addicted to it. It's such good quality. It pulls out all the hairs from root to tip and it's light to hold, it's rounded, it's comfortable. It's just a very good knife to use. I'm also going to use the finger condoms and the Dimas Tribber Stubby for some parts. In between the groomings I'm going to use the Greyhound comb and the Sentinel comb. Before we only had the terrier pad but as you will see in the video the big Sentinel comb is like very good to lay the coat and to see how the coat is, to lay the coat natural and to go just with a wide comb in between so you see how to style or where you're at at this moment to lay the hair in a certain place where then you can exactly see wherever it needs more grooming or more styling. You will see me using the Showtech palm pad for like pushing the hair up so I see the tips and then I can just take the tips out and I will also use the Ionic Bristol and Brass for the finishing to get out all the dandruff and to make the dog as shiny as possible. So this is the Scottish Terrier drawing I made. Uh, I first want to show you about the ears. I really don't like to tell you where to shave the ears and I don't really like lines because for me all dogs are different. If they have small ears or long ears and for example if you have a dog with very long ears and you shave all the ears very short it will be very much in your face. But if you really have to ask me for lines I would say like uh, start in the middle, shave everything off this way. Afterwards keep this. This is from a quarter or a third and this hair then you can make longer. Here and here you let the hair fill up the ear and then on the back side do the same. Everything here goes very short and then uh, make the line here in half and then uh, shave all this away and then keep this area long and so this is then gonna blend in with the hair from the head which is here and this is gonna make the head look longer. This is also gonna start your top line. Also note that here, this is going to come later, this is like a flat area and originally it's round but we keep the mind, we try to keep it as flat as possible. This is uh, another drawing of the Scottish Terrier head. This is all about this line, so where do we shave or where do we strip? If you have a puppy, if you have a chance to get a puppy, please uh, strip the head. You can make it nicer, it's more natural. As, you, as I just said, you can make it more flat. So this area you strip this way and you strip it from like behind the eyes to the to the stop here and um, then you shave everything towards uh, the mole here and towards the eye and this is towards the lip. You see here the head and the face. The face you can also strip so in between this part it's not like uh, very much hairy so you know imagine that this hair is all filled up with hair it's not neat it's it's you know you have to really see the face and it's everything is clean and clear also very important uh, the head and the nose should be like equal and if you have a dog which has a very short head you have to leave much more hair here behind here than possible and this way you you know you can play with the grooming as much as possible. Let's speak about another drawing and the head. So let's draw some hair. And as you can see here, it goes from short to long to long to longer. And as you can also see here, it li it's like going in a box. Uh, further on we will see the box. Here is the eyebrows. The eyebrows is like going a little up on the eyes and then straight down and in between it's short the hair. Uh, 
Now let's make some hair because if you see the ears without some hair they look very long. Now here you have the hair and now the head looks very short and let me show you if you do that you make the head longer. We can brush everything out and you, we can just make sure it's in a line and if you look from above or from the sides we have to like think about straight, a box, square and then you have a good result. Also the head, the head is actually round but what we do is we strip because we want to have create like a more flat head and then we make it longer here at the edges and then after the edges here where it's shaved we make it very short so that way with the hair we can like make the head as square as possible. As you can see here the ears are very long that's because we didn't leave any hair here and also here so let's draw some hair quickly and here you will see that here is the head we prolong the head by making it the hair just behind the ears longer here you see the overall drawing of the Scottish Terrier and we've talked about everything to do with the head. So this part is now done. We've shaved, we've shaved to there. And here we've shaved until there, okay. And all this is now short and we shaved with the clipper in this direction, which is not a must. You can also do it with direction, but then for me, it's like a, another, way and also for blending for me it's easier if I go up towards the hair direction and here you see the way to blend this is stripping so we strip this part and we strip it with the direction of the coat and it's in another color because it's like slightly shorter where we strip we strip everything and here you see the short um, arrows, a bit longer arrows and another bit longer arrows. We have the top line which is always now nice fluent. We don't want the top line to do like this. So you have to be careful not to strip too much hair here. And everybody is going to ask me where's the line here, where, until where do we strip? I don't really like lines but if I have to I can draw a line for you. The line is approximately here but it's a, like an invisible line and I like it as natural as possible. It means like short, a bit longer, a bit longer and then all the way long but certainly not advisable that you see the line. This is the next drawing and here you see the tail is different. We are speaking about this part. This dog has a very low tail set and this is the only way or the only why we would leave here hair. So yes, if the dog has a very low tail set, you can leave a lot of hair there, but normally it's when you have a good dog, it's not necessary. And let's now put a dog on top of this dog and here you see a dog with a good tail set. The back from the Scottish Terrier needs to be strong. We don't want this part here to be too short so we, we need to see like the rounding, the muscles and here as well we just comb the hair and if there's a lot of hair sticking out you can strip them but this is the overall look you should have. Also don't be afraid of going too short there. This should be short, neat, not too long, not too hairy. Here you see the front again. Here you see like the W which I was speaking about. This is some hair under his chest and here you see the cylindrical feet or legs. So here we are just combing and brushing and everything which is like sticking out you can strip it out. 
I will start by making the face as clear as possible. I say clear because I want to clear out all the hairs which are sticking out, mainly the front of the nose or the top of the nose, between the eyes and the nose. I will make sure that all the hairs which are sticking out are gone. So I'm going to brush and just pluck out, I will take the tips only and for this I will use my fingers. As you can see I'm holding the beard and the hair straight so when I am plucking the nose is not coming up with me and I'm plucking like in quick movements and I'm not really plucking in long movements so it's easy for the dog and the hair comes out quickly. It's very easy, just keep on brushing. I'm using the terrier palm pad to get the tips up and this way I see which hairs are in my way and which hairs need to come out. Here you see me dividing the eyebrows because I don't accidentally want to take too much hair out of the eyebrows. I have shaved the whole side of the head but my aim is to go stripping the full head and um, it's important that I'm not going bald so I'm doing a little bit at the time and I hope there's going to be an undercoat under the hair I'm pulling out. Because Sully is not used to it, I'm really taking my time and taking only little bits of hair at the time. Here again you see me using the comb to divide the eyebrows so I don't accidentally take the eyebrows off. I'm trying to do it as natural as possible. According to the breed standard the nose and the head needs to be like equally. So actually we stop stripping at the line of the ears and after the ears we leave the hair longer so we like make an extension of the head by leaving the hair longer after the ears. So here you, we have to be like careful not to groom, uh, not to pluck too much because around the ears or just in front of the ears it's possible that when you strip out the hair there that there's nothing underneath and you will have a great big bald spot. So just keep on plucking the hairs. I really like to like lift the hairs in one go and then the hairs are like lifted and then I see where to strip and then I strip them off and then the next time I also lift the hairs again and then take the tips and pluck it off. You see me using the Showtech needle comb because me myself I'm like panicky not to for sure not to take out too much hair on the eyebrows so I'm using the needle comb to divide the hair between where to strip and where not to strip. A long time ago we only used to uh, shave the top of the head but now these days uh, we always strip the top of the head. I have to say the top of the skull we make short and the sides of the skull we leave the hair longer but as I have no different layers in Sully's case the, the skull is totally rounded. Just keep on combing and making it as nice as possible. Here with my hand I'm showing you the head extension. You see how long the head looks by leaving the hair after the ears longer. So if you would like to have a good coat with a wiry texture you have to like de-wool or get as much of the wool out as possible. Also not only from the back but also the head, the furnishings, the legs, the tail. Actually you have to make the wool out or the undercoat out because this is like growing and producing more and more and more wool and if the follicle is full you won't have a good wiry structure anymore so you have to think about getting some wool out to make place in the follicle. And here you see the shed stopper in use. You don't really have to push a lot, you just have to like comb, use it as a comb and just glide the shed stopper through the coat and you will get the under wool out. 
you see the hairs coming out like the under wool or the undercoat it's like a grayish color this is because the skin is producing sebum and this is like a white oily uh, product that was before protecting the dog to get wet and um, this is why the color is like grayish. And now let's do some stripping. I'm going to start in the front but I never ever ever work on one place and stay there. Now I'm going to do the neck and the shoulder. I'm gradually going to take off some hairs um, and I'm not going to stay at one place and make this spot very short. I prefer to work up and down, left and right in that place and make it gradually go shorter. I'm using the Sentinel not only because it's comfortable to hold in your hands and extra light, but it's handmade in Belgium by Ronnie de Munter and Thierry Pietbeuf. And the teeth are like very well made and they will not cut the coat. They will absolutely, 100% sure, take out, pull out from root to tip. I like the whole set for like to start with with a wide one and to finish with a very fine one but if you only buy one I would definitely recommend the W2 it's like a uh, standard one and you can as well do the finishing or the big work as today here I decided to use the W2 because it's really very good. And here you see me using the terrier palm pad. I am like brushing up and down and left and right and going over the coat, taking little parts out at once. Here you see Sully lying down, so it must not be uncomfortable for Sully. Uh, so it's very good news. And I'm just uh, going over and little bits at the time, I'm teasing them away. I've done some blending in the neck, but I've left the long hair in the neck because remember, we have to make the head look longer. Sometimes I start stripping at the back and end up at the front. It's now because I was doing the clipping for the head that I started at the shoulders and I'm gradually moved up towards the top line. I have to leave the top line as long as possible for now because then with the finishing of the head, as we spoke about before like the head at after the ears the hair needs to stay to like prolong the leg so you see me working at the sides like the blending from the furnishing I'm also stripping a little the furnishings because I absolutely don't like the lines there and I'm gradually like brushing and stripping and actually for me it needs to look as natural as possible I know there's a line as you saw in the drawings but it, for me it's like a soft line and it's, it's definitely not a hard line. As well for like when uh, stripping at the back I personally like to, tail, to take the tail uh, up as much as possible and um, because when you get the tail down and you are stripping suddenly you can have a great big hole and then you might not get it uh, correct again. So just a little bit at the time as you can see stripping for blending between the furnishings you can use your fingers and much combing. I'm trying to show here that Sully has a very good tail set. It's high up and you can make the tail without any specifications. Um, here I'm showing you what it would happen if the dog wouldn't have a good tail set. It would mean that the tail is coming from more to down and there's like a gap in between. And um, when the dog puts the tail up, it's like first a part going down. If the, the dog has that, you have to like where the, the, the dog is going down the, the skin and you know the, the structure of the dog, you have to like fill this up with hair. Here we don't need to do any special grooming at the tail and we don't leave any hair in front of the tail. It's not necessary because the structure of Sully is very good and the tail needs to be in the form conical just like a carrot. Next to the tail it needs to be quite short to then show the nice bum and the nice strong structure in the back. 
So here we are combing and stripping and combing and stripping and we don't really want any longer hairs to stick out and I'm just blending and trying to like the top can go quite short and then as further down we go we leave it a little longer. In this case because we have not much underneath there we have to be doing everything quite slowly because as I said before I don't really want to suddenly have a line. And then when you go away to another part of the dog the hair will like take its position again and then you will see other parts sticking out and don't worry about this this is normal just go back there and just keep on working until the hair is like settled and stays down where it's necessary to be down. I'm, I did the sides first, then the back around the tail, then the back itself in the middle of the place and now I can slowly go back to the neck and like um, blend in the whole neck to the back of the dog. And there you saw Sully shaking so that's a help because when they shake they put all the hairs up or in a natural position and that's exactly what helps us to see where we need to pluck. Here at the neck or at the back of the head we don't really have um, a lot of hair so we have to be quite careful not to take out too much. As you can see just below the ear I was too enthusiastic and I had too much off but we were not very worried about this because afterwards we will fix it. And here I'm just like blending in uh, a part of the head um, so it's blended in with the longer part at the neck. I'm doing this with the thinning shears because also this part at the head where I was stripping everything is becoming too thin and I'm not really worried because I am thinning now but I'm sure next time I will be stripping so the hair which I thinned out will for sure get out of the follicle and stay nice and wiry. Here you see me lifting up the hairs with my fingers before I'm stripping and here this is a little trick because Sully was not really letting me groom the sides and I'm just putting over her one leg and this way she can't sit down. It's just a little trick and here you can see from the side that it's gradually changing and getting very natural. Now I'm here working on the tail. Let me explain to you how we are using the stripping knife. Actually we are using our thumb and like pushing with our thumb and then we are taking the knife and like combing through the hair and at a certain point we are having a little bit more pressure on the knife and we are fixing a few hairs between the thumb and the knife and pulling it out. This is because with our left hand we are like holding the tail and here we cannot like with our left hand pull it up and let the tail go down for combing. Uh, so you know if you can't each time comb the hair up uh, this is how we do how we do the stripping. And here because the hair is really hard and um, I was using the dime stripper the stubby. Here you see me using the thinning scissors, you don't have to worry, the back of the tail you can certainly do with the thinning scissors but just make sure you keep it at the back and you don't go forward. The tail will for sure be too short and not thick enough but just keep in mind this is a puppy and in the next versions it will be much easier to make like a thicker carrot and uh, to make a overall a more full tail. But for me just now it's important to get all the fluffy hair and the extra long hair out and uh, to get make sure that the next time the hair will push and it will be a very good coat. As you can see here I'm just pulling out a little bit at a time and I'm just pulling at the tops and I'm taking my time. I'm gradually gonna go from very long to a more shorter tail. Here you see very nice from the sides how I'm only like taking the tips you also saw how little bits hair I was actually pulling out.
Let's start doing some styling. Today I'm going to use the 7 inch Ergo line straight and uh, 48 teeth and that is a 6.5 inch Ergo line blender. When you are stripping and you're like a very like me, perfectionist, and you want to strip really everything off, sometimes you end up with a bald tail. So, because to prevent this, stop before it's too late and just the tip, because we don't really want to see the bald tip coming through there, uh, it's better to stop and start some blending, because you know next time you are going to strip for sure, so the hair will stay nice and rough. And this is the case here. I already saw some, the skin come through through and so before it's too late I prefer to style the rest of the tail with the blender. So in this case just hold the tail at his correct position nicely up and make sure there's no hair sticking out and it's all nice and clean there. Personally I don't worry that the tail is too short. Sully does not need to go to a dog show, it's a, a pet dog. Next time for sure the tail will be possible to make it a little wider and a bit longer hair. Here you see me blending the ears. I just don't want any hair sticking out too much at the top and I just want this as natural as possible. So all the hairs which are sticking out I'm gonna blend away and as you can see now Sully is lying down very comfortably and I bet Sully is right very ready to have a nap. So here you don't see much hairs sticking out and I really like to hold the dog behind his two ears to see the like the plugs in the ears so everything is nicely and clean. For the eyebrows I really use here, I am using also the blender. Many times before I didn't use the blender, I used the straight scissors. It's actually the same thing, sometimes it's better to use the straight scissors so you have a clean cut. But Sometimes you are afraid, like me today, I prefer to use the blenders. It's possible next day that I'm going to use the straight scissors or I'm just going to start with the blender and end up with the straight scissors. So here you see me just combing the hair to the front and little bit by little bit like doing the sides so it's clean and you can see the eyes. Ideally for finishing correctly, Sully's featherings and beard and eyebrows need to be washed and blow dried and then you can make a nice finish. Today we are going to style a little bit but I know Sully is coming back in two weeks time to be washed, blow dried and then we can do a better and a tighter finish. I will do the eyebrows shorter. Here I would just like to make a nice uh, finish between the long and the short part and then in two weeks time we will make uh, after the washing we will make the beard the blending between the long and the ear more nicer and more corrector. Here you see me shaving the pads we are not really going in between the pads we are just going with our clipper on top of the pads and making everything as neat as possible. The reason is if you take all the hairs out between the pads, the pads go more like open and you have more a wider foot. And another reason is when the dogs are walking on stones or on gravel, the gravel can go in between the pads and they can be hurt. So actually we leave between the pads some hair for protection. In the beginning of the video I told you about also the furnishing and the legs. Now because Sully is uh, such a puppy, uh, it's not really very necessary to go over all because the hair is not long enough, but the next groom we will certainly go over the furnishing. But here as you can see around the feet, it, the hair is already coming longer and here it's also like very necessary we strip this hair out and we don't scissor the feet around but we first strip and then we can scissor a little. 
And now I'm really very excited to show you this palm brush. It has like brass pins and it's very good. It acts like a vacuum clean for the dandruff. As you can see here, just brush over the coat and these pins will like grab all the dandruff away. As much as you use this, you can use it on any terrier but also on short coated breeds and you can get the dogs shiny with this brush. So the only thing you need to do is when you are using this brush, like brush, clean the brush, brush, clean the brush and gradually your dog will get shiny. I like the Showtech Plus Protect and Shine very much. It's like a gelish kind of liquid that you only have to put a little bit between your hands and this like takes away all the curls and all the, it like sets the coat and it makes the coat very shiny. I was going to use the black spray to disguise the few spots which you really saw the skin in between, but Sully thought he didn't really like the spray, so in this case I am using the powder. I'm only gonna use like a little bit, just like we use uh, when we make makeup. I'm just gonna pin some little, little bit product on the spots where you see the skin through. Here you see me using the serum just in my hands a little and gen gently go over the coat. And then we can use the brush again. See the difference? Now it's nice and shiny. The powder is also very easy to use. The powder has like a zifter inside. The only thing you need to do is shake it upside down and just like uh, take the powder with a powder brush and just dip it on the places where it's necessary. And there goes the bald spot. And it's no problem for Sully to leave me or let me do this. Here we can add some spray, but also Sully didn't like it very much. So at the end I was spraying the spray on top of the table and taking the spray with my fingers from the table and putting it on the dog's coat which is also not a problem because when it doesn't go one way, it goes another way. I was also trying to get the beard a bit more tidy, but as I said before, I'm like um, a perfectionist and I really don't want to cut the beard now. I want to wait until in two weeks and then like style the beard when after he had a wash and a dry and so now the beard is just going to stick out a little bit too much, but I don't really mind. Here you see a finished Sully. I'm not forgetting Sully is a puppy. I think Sully now is very tired and he's really ready for a nap. And I'm happy we decided to wash Sully two weeks from now. I'm also happy to wash Sully two weeks from now because we had to do a lot of stripping and we don't want to like interfere with water or shampoo too much on Sully's back. Here you see the fluffy ball, the before pictures and here you see the after pictures. I really enjoyed grooming Sully and don't forget there's a part two coming with more styling. Don't forget if you like any of the products being used in this video there's a link down below where you can just click and see all the products used. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was informative for you. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.